So what do you get if you take chocolate and vanilla D-bags and they're good after two beers and good after three beers girlfriends and they all take a camping trip in the woods? No, it's not amateur porn. It's the Blair Witch 2016. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen the 2016 third installment of the Blair Witch series in theaters, and I'm glad I didn't pay for it, although I saw it with my brother, as I see most of my movies, because he chooses them, and he absolutely loved this film. I mean, really liked, thought it was great compared to the original, really liked this film. And I can't imagine why, because really what it is is a hodgepodge of other horror movies kind of jammed together, stuck on the premise of the original Blair Witch. Now, as you know, the Blair Witch series, the franchise is, there's this chick that had some nasty happen to her, and she's out there in the middle of the woods now as a ghost or an interdimensional being. And, you know, she's called the Blair Witch because she went out there and caused the entire town of Blair to disappear or move away. And now anybody that enters her woods, she goes and screws with and turns them into murderers and stuff. So, on to this movie. What it is, it's the, the brother of the original chick from the Blair Witch Project. And he's coming, he's coming there because he thinks he's going to find his sister after all these years. Because he thinks she's still alive. Which, um... Is a thin idea for a movie. Just to begin with. The whole idea, I mean, it's... You're basically saying the first movie didn't exist. Because, obviously, if the first movie exists... The first movie's supposed to be grounded in reality. They found the footage. And now everybody is saying, yes, look. This is the Blair Witch Project. This explains what happened to your sister. So we take all that first movie, we tie it up in a knot, and we throw it out the window to make this movie, where here's this weirdo who thinks his sister's still out there, despite the fact that apparently hordes and hordes of people went out there and looked for these uh, folks. So I think what originally happened is that they wrote this movie, didn't finish it, I think, they wrote this movie to be a short-term sequel like maybe a, a year later or two years later or six months later or whatever it is, and that their footage was found with the original uh, footage. And then they took that half a script and they updated it and they added some crap and they made it into a movie. That's what I think happened. Now, now here's the thing. This movie starts out with four characters. You've got the dude, his like best friend, and then the dude's... Good After Two Beers Girlfriend, played by, let's see here, uh, played by Kayla Hernandez? Right, okay. And, I mean, she's, a couple of scenes where she looks pretty good. You know, if I had two beers in me, I, I think she would have been absolutely awesome. And then, like, the, the douche, the, the chocolate douchebag has chocolate douchebags, Good After Three Beers Girlfriend. I mean, none of these characters are likable, is what I'm saying. And I actually think it's it's really cliche. They made the African American the least likable character, the African American male. And there's no need for that. It doesn't drive the story at all. He's just a total dick, and the whole time you're being, okay, when is the Blair Witch gonna eat this guy? When is I want to stop seeing him in this movie? When is the Blair Witch going to eat him? And I shouldn't be feeling that for a character. This guy is supposedly like yeah, I'm going into the woods because my friend needs me to. That's kind of the premise, but no. What's really happening is I'm a D-bag, and I don't know. What I really want to do is run a three-way with my idiot friend and his... Uh, with my idiot friend's girlfriend and my girlfriend. That's what he's doing. Hoping, like, maybe the idiot friend will get killed in the woods, and then the two girls will hump him because it'll make them feel better. I guess that's what's going on. And then they meet up with this... This... You can't really call them rednecks. What they are is they're meddlers. Uh, as in metal, heavy metal music, and and of course these four four people, D bag D bag number two and and the beer twins, are really judgmental of this Caucasian heavy metal couple because they have a Confederate flag, and across the way they have an American flag, and it's like look, 
Okay, I get it, that kind of looks bad, but that doesn't make them bad people. They could just be in the history. I mean, you don't even know. Maybe that flag was purchased by their D-bag father who drank himself to death, and they just never took it down because it reminds them of him. It's never mentioned, it never, it's never talked about. You really have no idea what's going on there. And they never say, hey, I see you got a Confederate flag here. I mean, you know, do you really want to go camping with my African-American friend? I mean, is that cool with you? Because, uh, I, I mean, you're just sending me some mixed signals here. It's never referred to, so you don't know. So instead of it being like, hey, these guys are rednecks and they're probably not very nice, what it more looks like to me is, hey, we're being really judgmental of these people that have a different perspective on life than us, and that just makes them less likable characters to me. So, of course, they go to the woods and they get Blair Witched. Yeah. Blair Witched. I mean, it's hard to explain what the Blair Witch really is, because you've already got the two stories from the original film. You've got the story of the woman who uh, was executed for witchcraft, and then you've got the story of this killer that supposedly was influenced by her, but they're only tangentially linked. You cannot be sure. So this makes things complicated. And now, with this one, they've added time travel, or something of the nature, and they've added... Um, Something from the river that can get into your cuts. Yeah. Look, it really felt like there were two movies kind of squished together because they never finished writing either of them, and they were just trying to push for length. And that's what the whole thing with the, the river monster that gets into your wound seemed to be. It seemed to be like there could have been a whole movie just based on the fact that this chick got this cut in the river... And that happens really early on, and that, you know, what happens to her because of it. So, yeah, that could have been a movie. But here again is the thing. You've got one reason not to do this. You've got these people you don't trust. Now you've got reason to not to do this. One of your party, you're not far from the vehicles, is injured. So this is what we call a stupid person horror movie. What it is is the people in the horror movie are too stupid to do the right thing and get out of the movie until it's too late. There's no legitimate reason for them to be there. And again, if your goal is to see a movie where a bunch of people get terrorized by some really kind of vague monster, The Blair Witch is an excellent film for you. If you're looking for a smarter movie, The Blair Witch is a horrible film for you. I mean, I will actually say I like the cinematography in this movie. That was well done. The premise is sound. It is simply unclear and poorly used. And we didn't really learn enough about what was going on in this woods to, to justify. I think if they had made this more of a period piece, well, the problem is the technology used in this movie, they still don't have today. Uh, they think they have it in Japan, but it's not wide use in America, and it doesn't look like what they showed in the movie. So there's that as a basic problem, is this is kind of a science fiction film because of what it is. And further on to the point, it is so convoluted and so just hodgepodgey that I really couldn't enjoy it because I didn't, didn't see something coherent. It feels more like it's a bunch of stuff just stuck together, and that's the problem. So The Blair Witch, I do not recommend this movie. It is a cheeseball horror movie that I think would be just fine if you're getting it on Blu-ray on sale and you're watching it with your friends at a party and drinking beer. If you're going to the theater, you're kind of going to just be like, eh, it's a waste of a good premise. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I'm Richard Neal. I'd like you to tell me just how wrong I am in the comments below. And, you know, just remember, there's a lot of horror movies out there. Go see a good one. Not this crap.